Right now on Action News Live at midday, President Obama retakes the White House. We know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. Action News has all your election results. We're also live from the Obama campaign headquarters in Chicago with the latest. So what lies ahead? Does a second term mean more of the same? Hear what it might mean for your family and for America. And he may have lost the presidential election, but it doesn't mean his career has ended. Hear what could be next for Mitt Romney and whether or not Paul Ryan will return to Congress. Let's get right to our red, white, and blue 2012 political coverage now. And with your stories and your struggles, I return to the White House more determined and more inspired than ever about the work there is to do and the future that lies ahead. Four more years. President Obama will stay on as Commander-in-Chief. Hello, and thanks for joining us for Action News Live at midday, the day after the election. Good to see you. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Casey Smith. Quite an election it was. President Obama declared victory early this morning. He won both the electoral vote and the popular vote. It turned out to be a wider margin than most people had predicted. The polls had tightened up a couple of weeks before, but the president as you saw in the end, kind of widen out the margin. Both President Obama and Mitt Romney gave some pretty amazing speeches last night. Mitt Romney's, of course, the concession speech, a very classy one. And President Obama saying that he hopes to meet with Mitt Romney to discuss a way for our country to move forward. ABC's T.J. Winnick is outside Obama campaign headquarters in Chicago with the latest. T.J.? Good afternoon. President Obama spent the night here in Chicago. He and his family will return to the White House later this afternoon. Somehow he overcame a historically slow economy and high unemployment to win four more years. Crowds rejoiced in Times Square, outside the White House, and in Chicago. I want to thank every American who participated in this election. Whether you voted for the very first time or waited in line for a very long time. By the way, we have to fix that. The outcome became clear before midnight as the president's Midwestern firewall held firm. We have fought our way back and we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. The latest numbers in the Electoral College, 303 votes for President Obama, 206 for Governor Romney. Florida still too close to call. The popular vote for President Obama, 59 million votes, and Governor Romney with 56 million. The Romney crowd in Boston was tense most of the night, which gave way to disappointment. Paul and I have left everything on the field. We have given our all to this campaign. The fact that only 72% of voters yesterday were white hurt the Republicans and helped President Obama put together a winning coalition of minorities, women, and young voters. What's happened with the Republicans is they are, the Republican Party is a madman party in a modern family America. While 77% of Americans still believe the economy was in bad shape, Romney only edged the president slightly in terms of who voters trusted to handle the situation. 49 to 48 percent. Reporting live in Chicago, T.J. Winnick, ABC News. Now back to you. Thank you, T.J. Hundreds of thousands of Nevadans cast their ballots in this presidential election. There were six electoral votes on the line in the Silver State. President Obama won the state with 52 percent of the vote. Mitt Romney trailed with 46 percent. For many, it was no surprise the president also carried Nevada in 2008. Our state had a record turnout for this year's election, surpassing the one million ballot mark. The state reported nearly 81 percent of the state's active registered voters cast a ballot in this election. 700,000 actually voted early. The rest stood in line yesterday. Secretary of State Ross Miller says there were only some minor problems on Election Day. Three voter machines had minor malfunctions, but they were quickly repaired. That record turnout caused some of Nevada's polling places to co close about an hour and a half after the deadline. Action News was at the state election office near Cheyenne and MLK when election workers dropped off ballot boxes from their voting locations a little later than expected. While it wasn't smooth sailing at every voting site across the country, there was a staggering six to seven hour wait in Miami. 
ran here. I was already I already tried to vote once a day and it was a six and a half hour wait at four and I'm over it. <laughs> We're not gonna wait four hours. Uh, whoever is responsible for this and there has to be some kind of accountability somewhere down the road uh, should be fired. This particular precinct, I'm not happy. Election officials say a lot of precincts were assigned to that location and that caused the backup. The Miami-Dade County Mayor says the other issue was there weren't enough poll workers there to meet demand. Well, one race here ended while you were sleeping and ended one candidate's 14 years in public service. The race between Senator Dean Heller and Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley came down to the wire. In the end, Heller pulled out a win. It was very close, though just about 12,000 votes separated the two. Berkeley conceded the race just after midnight. She says she fought the good fight, but it just wasn't enough. Well, this race ended a lot closer than most predicted. Heller was up by as many as six points in the polls just a few days ago, actually. Another race here in the Valley will go down in history. Stephen Horsford won the first ever election in the newly created District 4. He's also the first African-American from Nevada to be elected to Congress. Danny Tarkanian lost that race with 42 percent to Horsford's 50 percent. Now that President Obama has his second term, there are growing rumors this midday about a looming crisis, a so-called taxmageddon. Taxmageddon is coming. Beware the taxmageddon. 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 You get the idea. To steer clear of the so-called fiscal cliff, President Obama, House Speaker John Boehner, and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will have to reach an agreement on tax and spending cuts, or just about every American household will see a bigger chunk of their income go to the IRS starting January 1st. We're talking a $3,500 a year tax hike for the average family making $70,000 a year. Well, President Obama needs to also find replacements for two of his most important cabinet secretaries. I think after 20 years, it would be a, probably a good idea to just find out how tired I am. Stevens. Well, that was a while ago. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner have both said they're leaving shortly after the first of the year. Even though the next four years of Mitt Romney's life will not be in the Oval Office, it doesn't mean he can't find success. Other candidates who have lost presidential elections managed some triumphs in and out of the political arena. It's not yet clear what Mitt Romney plans on doing, but experts say he is now an important figure in the Republican Party. Paul Ryan says he is returning to Congress. The Republican vice presidential nominee says he will be seated when the new House convenes in January. But first, she says he wants to spend some time with his family before resuming his responsibilities as House Budget Committee Chair. Ryan was re-elected to his House seat from Wisconsin the same night he and Mitt Romney came up short in their bid for the White House. And remember, Action News wants to keep you in the loop at all times. There were plenty of other contested races here in our state. For those results, go to our website, ktnv.com. And right now, let's send things over to Mike Chalinas with a look at your weather first forecast. Thanks, Lee. 1107 is the time. Weather first out there, it is absolutely beautiful. Lots of sunshine and uh, current temperature right now, 73 degrees at McCarran, 73 in Mesquite and 75 degrees in Laughlin. We should hit our high or close to it by lunchtime. I'm looking for 79 and eventually 81 for the high. Light winds today, just a couple of fair weather clouds late. Coming our way? a better than 20 degree temperature drop. In fact, close to 25 degree temperature drop. I'll tell you when in just a bit. Now to a developing story we have been following all morning long. Metro and Henderson police are investigating an overnight shooting where officers say they were forced to fire. Action News reporter Jessica Janner live where it happened near Eastern and St. Rose. Jessica. Casey and Lisa, good morning. You can still st see rather that there is still a crime scene out here and there are police still here on scene securing the area. The 36 year old man that was killed, he was actually shot uh, near the information for you this morning. I just got off the phone with the public information officer for Henderson Police. He tells me three officers actually opened fire. They have now all been placed on paid administrative leave. We don't know how many times the suspect was actually shot. That is going to be determined by an autopsy. The shooting that happened here about 2 a.m. this morning, it all stemmed from a domestic violence call around 1130 last night. We're told from a gas station just a few blocks from here, the alleged girlfriend of the suspect called police and police say they found the man walking down St. Rose Parkway. That is when a standoff ensued. 
And at some point he took the gun, which was he had at his own head, and then pointed it directly at officers. And the officers could see that his finger was on the trigger. He really left the officers with no other option but to fire. And the suspect died here on scene. Inve investigators are here now. We're going to have the very latest for you when it's available. Reporting live from near Eastern and St. Rose, Jessica Janner, Channel 13 Action News. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Ahead today, the Clark County Commission deciding the Sloan Flood Channel issue. People who live near that area say they've had to deal with foul odors and breeding bugs since North Las Vegas started flushing treated wastewater into the county-owned flood channel. The commission will decide if a pipeline should be built to carry the water to Lake Mead. North Las Vegas would have to pay the county $8 million to design and build that pipe. The county would chip in another $7 million the city would have to pay back later. Still ahead on Action News Live at Midday, winter can kill you, but it's not the cold or the snow shoveling that'll do you in. We'll tell you what the experts are saying now. And before we go to break, a look at the winners in Nevada's congressional races. District 1, Shelley Berkeley's old seat was won by Dina Titus. She beats Chris Edwards by a 2-to-1 margin. District 2 in northern Nevada saw Mark Amade getting the most votes and holding on to his seat in Washington. He beat Sam Kopenick. District 3 incumbent Republican Joe Heck beat John Asagara in a very hard-fought race. Joe Heck easily wins, though. Returns to Washington once again. Stephen Horsford beat Danny Tarkanian in that newly created District 4 race. Love 13 is the time, and um, happy Wednesday to you. Beautiful view of the valley right now. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. Temperatures look like this in behind me. 73 at McCarran, 75 per ump. 67 degrees in Indian Springs and a toasty 54 Lee Canyon. That's the last time you're going to see a temperature like that for a while up there. 69 degrees in Henderson, 71 at Dallas, 73 North Las Vegas. Lots of sunshine through today. I don't see any problems meteorologically today. 81 degrees, your high today with light winds. Here's the thing, coming our way is a lot of weather. You can see a thin line of clouds to the north and west of us across northern California. That is essentially the jet stream. Upper level energy model shows the jet just dropping down to the south. And I think it'll be past us Friday afternoon. After that, a lot of weather comes our way. And you see how cold we are this weekend with a jet to the south of us. Big snow system will be hitting the upper Midwest with perhaps severe weather in the central plains this weekend because of it. 56 tonight, 77 tomorrow. We pick up some clouds. We pick up some wind. We stay dry. Temperatures plummet on Friday to 60 for the high with a drop or two of rain in the valley, maybe some light snow in the mountains, and we could see 15 to 30 mile an hour winds. That parlays into Saturday into clearing skies late in the day, but a high of just 54. Sunday morning in the valley, an overnight low of 41 with a high of just 54 and sunny. We're back up to 67 next Wednesday. Coming up, we'll take a look at the nor'easter in the east and a big system in the central plains this weekend. Casey? Thanks, Mike. You know, there's nothing like a good hockey game in the desert to get your blood boiling. The Armed Services Hockey Association, Mike loves this, 10th anniversary Hockey for Heroes tournament starts tomorrow, runs through this weekend. Janice McCormick is the tournament coordinator. Monique Peliquin is one of the international players battling out for basically bragging rights, but we're glad you're here. Thank you. This is cool. Now, this is a 24-7 hockey tournament for the next basically four days. That's correct. The puck drops tomorrow morning at 8.50. Um, the teams will be playing straight through right until Sunday afternoon. There's a few breaks um, during the tournament. Uh, it's probably best for... Uh, spectators to go to the website, uh, which is www.armservicesHockey.com. Okay. There's a full schedule available there. Um, it's a free tournament. There's no charge. Right. Fiesta There's, Rancho in, in the uh, the hockey ring there. That's well, it's, it's the Sobe, ice arena. Sobe Ice Arena. Um, this year we have 22 teams, all of uh, military, fire, and police status. So it's um, a great tournament. And, and that uh, brings me to Monique. Because you are playing in it, okay? <laughs> yes. You're one of, I believe, three women involved in the teams, or are yes. there more? Uh, I believe there's about three. Yeah, there's about three. two or three. Okay, two or three. And you're busting heads with the big guys now. Are you a firefighter, or uh, how do no, you No, um, in the Air Force. You're in the Air Force, yes. okay. Why on earth would you want to play hockey with all these big guys? Because you know what? I hear they play rough. <laughs> yeah, they okay? play pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I played with the women back in high school, and so when I joined the Air Force in Germany, um, it was just guys. I got on the ice and I was the only girl. They thought I was just like this little guy getting out there, but then they seen it was me and they're like, oh no. <laughs> so you do well, you do well. Yeah, I do pretty good. Well, that, that's, that's good. <laughs> what position do you play? Uh, right wing. 
Okay, so uh, this goes on for roughly, I'm going to, uh, 96 hours with some breaks. Yeah. And how many teams do you have? And uh, you obviously have to play more than once. When do you get any rest, Monique? <laughs> In between games, um, sometimes we have like a 12 hour period, sometimes just a four hour period. Like we have a game at 4.30 in the morning, so wow. that's going to be rough, but <laughs> Well, we wish hard. you a lot of luck. Which team are you on so we know who to cheer for? Uh, Nellis Thunder. Nellis Thunder. Okay, yes. once again, it starts tomorrow. It goes for four straight dates. It's absolutely free. It's a Fiesta Rancho's Ice Arena, and uh, we're cheering on Monique. And you, Janice, you got a lot of work to do. I got a lot you, you of work. You got a, quite, quite a, a, an event to go. They, it's they all say free. Vegas, there's no sleeping in Vegas. Oh, so. no. Oh, no, 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 no. But there, there isn't hockey very often, so we're <laughs> excited to go out and see it. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you, Monique. We're Thank you so it. much. We'll be right back. The seven-day forecast, sponsored by the all-new Station Casino's Boarding Pass. Get the card that gets you meals, cash back, and free slot play faster. Sign up today. We all know about Oscars, Grammys, and Emmys, but here's one award no one wants to win. Hi, I'm Darcy Spears from Channel 13. Before you eat out again, see who wins the Dirty Dining Award this week. Action News Live at 11 tonight. In today's health report, heart attacks are more deadly in winter, but don't blame the cold weather. People are more likely to suffer some form of cardiovascular disease during the winter months, according to experts, even when you live in a desert. They say people are 26 to 36 percent more likely to die from a heart attack, stroke, or other circulatory disease in the winter compared to the summer season, at least. Researchers think the flu and depression are possible causes. Exercise, it could help you live longer even if you're overweight. Researchers from the National Cancer Institute and Harvard Medical School looked at more than 630,000 people. They found any regular, moderate exercise boosted life expectancy. On the flip side, the doctors say healthy weight people who don't exercise had about three fewer years to live. So here's their advice. Exercise at least two and a half hours each week. Damage from a massive heart attack might not be as permanent as once thought thanks to stem cell therapy. Research shows people who were infused with their own heart stem cells had a more flexible heart muscle and their hearts pumped blood more efficiently. They also had half the scarring after treatment. The authors say more studies are needed, though, to confirm the results before they begin, can become valid. Still ahead on Action News, one state will continue to put its death row inmates to death. We'll tell you which one. Plus, marijuana now legal in more states. Here where that passed. Action News Midday continues. A California measure that would abolish the state's death penalty has been defeated. Proposition 34 would have commuted the sentences of more than 700 death row inmates to life in prison without parole. That won't happen now. California hasn't executed anyone, though, in more than six years. Recreational marijuana is now legal in Colorado and Washington State. The initiative regulates the production, possession, and distribution of marijuana for people 21 and older. The state of Oregon had a similar measure on its ballot, but that failed. Supporters of same-sex marriage are celebrating a victory in Maryland and Maine. Voters approved an initiative to approve gay marriage. Washington also voted on a similar measure, but results are still not in for that state as of right now. Gay marriage is now legal in six states and the District of Columbia. The U.S. Senate has elected its first openly gay member, Wisconsin Democrat Tammy Baldwin beat out former Wisconsin Governor Tommy Thompson. Baldwin is also Wisconsin's first female U.S. Senator. She takes over for retiring Democrat Herb Cole. More to come when Action News Midday returns. We are still breaking down last night's elections and the impact it's having on the stock market this morning. Stay with us. Right now on Action News Live at Midday, President Obama is re-elected after a nail-biter. The president won several critical swing states, though, including Nevada. More in a live report. Speaking of Nevada, we take a look at some of the races fought here and the reaction from the winners. And could it be a funding fail? The Clark County School District asked voters for help renovating older schools. We'll have the results and what that means for our schools. 
But first, let's get right to the biggest decision on election night. The president has been reelected after a hard-fought campaign. He claimed a decisive electoral victory over challenger Mitt Romney. The popular vote was a lot closer. Hello and thank you for staying with us for the second half of Action News Live at Midday. I'm Casey Smith. And I'm Lisa Remillar. The president beat Republican challenger Mitt Romney after nabbing almost every one of those 12 crucial battleground states, including here in Nevada. It was an exciting night. ABC's T.J. Winnick is outside the Obama campaign headquarters in Chicago with the very latest. Good afternoon, T.J. Good afternoon. President Obama spent the night here in Chicago. He and his family will return to the White House later this afternoon. Somehow he overcame a historically slow economy and high unemployment to win four more years. Crowds rejoiced in Times Square, outside the White House, and in Chicago. I want to thank every American who participated in this election. Whether you voted for the very first time or waited in line for a very long time. By the way, we have to fix that. The outcome became clear before midnight as the president's Midwestern firewall held firm. We have fought our way back. And we know in our hearts that for the United States of America, the best is yet to come. The latest numbers in the Electoral College, 303 votes for President Obama, 206 for Governor Romney. Florida still too close to call. The popular vote for President Obama, 59 million votes, and Governor Romney with 56 million. The Romney crowd in Boston was tense most of the night, which gave way to disappointment. Paul and I have left everything on the field. We have given our all to this campaign. The fact that only 72 percent of voters yesterday were white hurt the Republicans and helped President Obama put together a winning coalition of minorities, women and young voters. What's happened with the Republicans is they are, the Republican Party is a madman party in a modern family America. While 77 percent of Americans thought the uh, economy is still in bad shape, Romney only slightly edged the president when it came to who they trusted to handle the situation more effectively, 49 to 48 percent. Reporting live in Chicago this afternoon, T.J. Winnick, ABC News. Now back to you. Thank you, T.J. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada wasted no time talking to reporters in Washington. He says everyone needs to work together now, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Please, everyone, accept this. They tried it before. They, the Republicans, uh, they tried it before. We're going to shut down the government, and we're not going to raise the debt ceiling. If they want to go through that again, fine. But we're we're not we're not going to be uh, held subject to something that was done, uh, as a matter of fact, in all previous administrations. Reid also called for a quick solution to Washington's fiscal cliff, the one we told you about earlier. He says making wealthier people pay higher taxes needs to be part of any solution to the government's budget woes. Well, local voters had a lot to say about the outcome of the race as soon as the race was called last night. Obama supporters celebrated four more years. I'm absolutely delighted. I think he's the best man that we could ever possibly have for president of the United States. Expected to go Democrat. Mitt Romney's faithful were not really happy with those results. And I'm very disappointed because I don't understand four years of failure. I, I mean, I just don't get it. You know, I don't get it. It's um, how could how could people not see that? Many Nevadans weren't happy the election was called before Nevada's votes were even counted. The Senate race between seven-term Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley and incumbent Senator Dean Heller was indeed a close one. Dean Heller is our senator once again, though. In the end, just about 12,000 votes separated the two. Berkeley says she fought the good fight, but it just wasn't enough. Heller has issued a statement after he was elected saying, quote, I am so grateful to our team of volunteers who knocked on doors, made phone calls, and dedicated so many long, hard hours to achieve victory tonight. This was a hard-fought campaign, and I would also like to thank Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley for her service to our state and to our country. Another race here in the Valley will go down in history. Stephen Horsford won the first-ever election in the newly created District 4. He is also the first African-American from Nevada to be elected to Congress. Danny Tarkanian lost the race with 42 percent to Horsford's 50 percent.
You may be interested to know the results of one race in Missouri because that's where Republican Todd Aiken made his controversial legitimate rape comment. He was defeated last night by Democrat Claire McCaskill. Aiken faced calls to resign from his party following his remarks, but declined to bow out. McCaskill and other Democrats slammed him for being out of touch with women, and some within his own party urged him to quit the race. Wall Street is reacting to the election this morning. Uh, news of the weaker European economy isn't helping, and that impending fiscal cliff we told you about earlier in the show are all contributing to this. The Dow Jones Industrial is down just about 280 points. The Nasdaq's off about 70 points. The S&P 500 down 30 points and on track for its biggest drop since June. Well, one of the big issues decided by Clark County voters yesterday was whether or not homeowners should pay more to help fund schools. The proposed levy on property taxes would have collected about $670 million, that is, dollars for building repairs and upgrades. It was rejected by quite a large margin, more than 30 points. The district had asked voters to increase their property tax rate by about 21 cents per $100 of assessed value on their homes. The tax rate would have returned to its current level after six years, but voters opted for no new taxes anyway. It's the first time since the 1980s the Clark County School District failed to convince voters to back a capital funding measure. We knew that the times are difficult for people. The economic recovery has not really kicked it all the way in yet. Um, but after not doing it in 2008 and not doing it in 2010, um, and there's no money for construction uh, left, the trustees decided they simply at least had to ask the question. The district says it might be forced to close some schools over the next few years and transfer those students elsewhere. The district also says that's just another cost it will have to deal with. 11.37 is the time, and what a beautiful day it is out there again. It's kind of like getting like a broken record. I just keep saying the same thing over and over again, but it's hard to argue with it. 73 right now at McCarran, 75, and Pahrump at 73 in Mesquiteen. 76 degrees in Laughlin. Later today, I think we're up to 81. We'll see lovely sunshine all day long with light winds. Coming our way, though, an abrupt change. Um, in fact, a huge change weather-wise. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Now to a developing story out of Ghana. Top three floors of a six-story shopping center collapsed in the capital city of Accra. Authorities say people are trapped underneath all that rubble. There are no figures on deaths or injuries as of yet. Rescue teams are working to free all those people trapped underneath that. Here in this country, just one week after Superstorm Sandy led to the cancellation of more than 20,000 flights, the airline industry is at it again, canceling flights into and out of the Northeast ahead of another storm. United has already grounded about 500 flights today out of New York area's three major airports. Other airlines have said they are evaluating which flights to cancel. Many have issued fee change waivers so travelers can change their plans without penalty. Many of the people left homeless by Superstorm Sandy flocked to home improvement stores to stock up on supplies, shovels, salt, and gas cans were among the most coveted items on store shelves. Well, some generators are already sold out at this store in Piscataway, New York, New Jersey, that is. Forecasters say the Nor'easter could dump a mix of snow, rain, and wind in the next couple of days. The American Red Cross is desperate for blood donors in the wake of Sandy, and a local group of cab drivers is helping them out. Yellow Checker Star and its employees are teaming up with the Red Cross to host an emergency blood drive. You can donate at Yellow Checker Star Cab near South Decatur and Patrick. You have until 5.30 tonight. Well, still a lot more to come on Action News Midday. But before we go to break, a look at local Clark County Commissioner races in District A. Steve Sisolak, the incumbent, regained his seat over Barry Kirk. Barry Tom, Kerr, rather. Excuse me, Tom Collins, also an incumbent, held on to his seat in District B, beating Ruth Johnson. In District C, Larry Brown defeated Craig Lake. And Lawrence Weekly retained his seat in District D. He beat Wesley Cornell. This is Action News Midday with Lisa Remillard, Casey Smith, and Weather First with meteorologist Mike Chilinas. Love 42 is the time, and it is absolutely brilliant out there. I just love this shot from our high def cam because it just, when you look out, 
It looks like we're sitting in a resort. It just looks fantastic. I love it. Uh, not that where we're at is, is not beautiful. It is. But, but, but sitting at the corner of Valley View and DI uh, in between Spring Mountain, it, it not, doesn't look quite that pretty. <laughs> Outside uh, right now, temperatures look like this. 73 degrees at McCarran. It is 75 degrees in Perup. 68 in Spring. 77 Laughlin and Box at a mid-73 degrees in Mesquite. 69 in Henderson. 71 in Dallas and 73 North Las Vegas. So for the rest of today, I see temperatures yet again uh, going above that 80 degree mark. It was 82 yesterday. I think we'll be at 81 today. So just a little bit cooler with generally speaking light winds. If we get any clouds at all, maybe a wisp of a high level cloud late. That's about it. We will see more clouds tomorrow. Let me address the nor'easter. Uh, right now that's pushing on up into the Atlantic Northeast. Uh, and, you know, you've kind of got insult to injury. Will this be as strong as Sandy was? No, not even close. But you're bringing more rain, more wind, a higher surf, and then snow in the inland areas. Uh, and so that comes atop what they had last week, and it's just not a good situation. But that will be happening through Thursday as this low heads up the coast, so it's going to be a mess in the Northeast. Meanwhile, for us, we do have... Rather large changes coming weather-wise. You see this thin line of clouds to our north and west. That essentially is the jet stream, a big and deep digging trough of low pressure. This is going to push down the left coast and then through our area by Friday afternoon. As it does so, temperatures will plunge, and along with that, we'll see maybe some snow atop Mount Charleston, nothing heavy, a couple of drops of rain in the uh, valley, maybe. But the main thing we'll see are colder temperatures and some wind. This system then will skedaddle and push up into the upper Midwest, where I think it brings a wintry bag of weather into places like Minnesota. And then um, as you head further south, possibly severe weather in the central plains. Here, it's just going to be colder temps. 56 tonight, 77 tomorrow. Not bad. A few clouds, it turns windy. Then look out Friday. The door to the north opens. We get 60 for a high. Mostly cloudy skies. A drop or two of rain in the valley, a little snow atop the mountain maybe. And wind, 15 to 30 mile an hour winds, I think minimum. 54 is your high Saturday, that's it. We clear off late in the day. Sunday, the high is 54. But look at the overnight low Sunday morning, 41. And then 60 on Monday, 65 Tuesday, 50, uh, 67 degrees on Wednesday. So Sunday morning, Remillard. You need to get out the babushka I know. and the -lux. I know. <laughs> Covers over the head. <laughs> All right. Go. Everyone loves great live music. So what if I told you you could see the next big thing in music for just 25 bucks and all the money went to charity? It's happening at the Cosmopolitan, and Michelle Clark is here to talk about Sunset Sessions. How are you, Michelle? I'm wonderful. How are you, Lisa? I am so happy that you have decided to bring this to Las Vegas. Tell everybody at home what exactly is happening. Uh, we fly in radio stations and music supervisors, the gatekeepers and tastemakers of the music industry, and we have bands play for them all weekend, new bands. Um, we actually take roll call. So up on the marquee at the Cosmopolitan, you'll see the names of all the people that can break these artists' careers. We fly them in uh, from all over the world, really, and have the bands. There's 18 bands over the course of three days playing at the Boulevard Pool. And for the first time, the public is going to get access to this unbelievable event. Yes, this is our my 18 Sunset Sessions in 15 years, mm -hmm. and it's the first time the public can join uh, and, and not just access, but influence. Right. Because if all these gatekeepers are there watching the bands play, a brand new band play. They want to the see public, how the public reacts. Exactly. Sure. So if the public responds favorably, maybe those radio stations are going to go back and start playing that band like they did with Jason Mraz or the Black Keys or Jack Johnson. Which are all, by the way, people that whose careers basically broke at Sunset Sessions. We launched them. That's so pretty amazing. We launched I'm Yours from the Sunset Session stage in 2008. Jason Mraz's song I'm Yours. And then he came back and played again as a thank you in 2010. And, and then he came again and played in this February in 2012. Awesome. And so when the Black Keys played, nobody knew who they were. There were 60 people in the room. Wow. So if, if people see um, artists that are on the list that they're not familiar with, don't miss them. Yeah, because they could be the next big thing in music. Correct. What I want to get to, because this is very important, the best part about this, I think, is that all of the money that you are raising are going to some local charities right here in our area. Absolutely. 
So the Cosmopolitan picked their charities mm -hmm. that they and the tickets are twenty five dollars each, and it's what Opportunity Opportunity Village, Village. Uh, the Recording Academy, Music Cares, Three Square, all of the local you know charities that we all know and love. And you can also not just donate money, but also your time instead right. of money, which and, is a great idea. And twenty five dollars really for a ticket to see you know eighteen bands is unbelievable. Unreal. All it's right, we are so happy that you have decided to come to Las Vegas. Michelle told me I'm that. Very happy. Happy. The reason they they did so was because the Cosmopolitan it's opened so up that fantastic Absolutely. Boulevard Pool. Yes, we're very happy. Have a wonderful weekend event. Thank Go you. out and enjoy sunset sessions this weekend, Casey. Thanks, Lisa. Coming up on Action News Live at 3:30, the latest on the mystery shooter in Michigan that's accused of shooting at 24 cars on the freeway. Plus, how many voters turned out last night? It was a near record. We'll hear from Secretary of State Ross Miller on just how many cast their vote. And don't forget to enter our Stay and play vacations at Station Casinos Hotels. A $100 Fabulous Freddy card is waiting for you. Just text the word locals to 61749 or click on contest at ktnv.com. Then watch Action News this morning every weekday. If you see your name, call within 30 minutes and win. Here's tonight's primetime lineup on Channel 8. Channel 13, excuse me, at 8 is what I meant to say. The Middle, at 8.30, The Neighbors, 9 o'clock, Modern Family, 9.30, Suburgatory, 10 o'clock, Nashville, 11 o'clock, Action News Live at 11. It took more than a century, but this South Carolina woman finally voted. 106-year-old Gladys Miller cast her ballot in the presidential election with the help of a friend. She has wow. been alive for 19 presidencies, dating all the way back to Teddy wow. Roosevelt. Bully. But... This is the first time she said she voted. She said her friend said, you know, convinced her that the time is right. This is the Phenomenal. time to vote. So good for her. Six years old. And I need my glasses. I know. She's she no glasses. glasses. That's totally right. fine. We want to <laughs> thank Michelle for coming in. Don't forget, Sunset Sessions starts tomorrow at the Cosmopolitan. Just $25 to see the newest up-and-coming bands that are going to be all over your radio hmm. airwaves. 96 straight hours with a few breaks. So the Armed <laughs> Services Hockey Association Hockey for Heroes Tournament, Fiesta Rancho, Ice Arena, starts tomorrow and Sunday. It's free. Go on out there. Cheer on your favorite team. We will see you back here early tomorrow morning. Injured in an auto accident? Call Harris and Harris Personal Injury Lawyers. Proven results.